Hello and welcome to round 10 of the Pecking Order Show, a show where we talk about Australian football through the lens of the TPO rankings. You can think of it like the FIFA World Rankings, but for Australian football clubs only, so much better than the FIFA World Rankings. At the moment, 200 clubs in the future, 1,000 plus. Now, Jake, what are you wearing tonight? I've got uh, delivered today, check the mail, I've got a, a Heidelberg United shirt. Um, they've put out a heritage jersey, it's 1958 inspired, uh, I don't know if you can see the whole thing there, but pretty cool, so I, I, you know, they, were, they obviously put this special jersey together and put it up on their, their website for sale, so I thought, what a, what a good time to start an Australian football jersey collection, so this is the, the first shirt of mine, and um, Heidelberg, the, the highest ranked non-A-League club, so that's what I've, I've started with. Perfect, and um, thanks to Peninsula Power from the FQPL um, for letting me wear this jersey tonight. 2015 Grand Final Championship jersey, winning jersey, um, and very timely, guys, because Peninsula currently, after the weekend, are the, um, got the longest undefeated streak in the country. Uh, it's currently sitting, is it 12 games now, Jake? Yep, up to 12. Very impressive. So thanks again to Peninsula, big shout out. And any, any other clubs who want to get their shirts featured on, we can we can surely do that and give you a shout out as well. So anyway, in round 10 of the Pecking Order Show, we're answering the question, who will be the winner at the end of the year? Who will be the losers? Who will get promoted? Who will get relegated? Um, now, which leagues are we talking about? Um, we're talking the New South Wales NPL, the Western Australian NPL and the South Australian NPL. Now, obviously, I've mentioned promotion. There won't be any promotion from those leagues. Um, yet we can't get into the A League, unfortunately, NPL clubs. But we will be talking to clubs at the at both ends of the table. But first, let's recap seven games we previewed on last week's show. They are up on the whiteboard there. You probably can't read them, so let's run through them. Jake, you cool if I run through my games first? Yeah, let's do it that way. That's uh, yep. probably the easiest. Okay, so well, here's a game: Olympic versus Strikers in the. Queensland NPL. Now, Jake, you should almost run through this because you went to this game live on Sunday. Um, now, Strikers got up 1-0. We predicted a Strikers win. You guys, 71% of you idiots. No, <laughs> no um, Olympic, you predicted Olympic win. Um, so we got one up on you there. It was um, a good game. Jake, what happened? I mean, quickly run us through the game, and I mean quickly, but, but then um, <laughs> tell us what happened in the rankings too. You know I'm not good at uh, doing these things quickly. quickly. <laughs> um, I think it was a pretty tight game. It was a, a tense game. Olympic were on top in, in the first half an hour or so and, and looked quite good. Uh, and as the you know, strikers just held them out, um, solid mm. defending. And, um, you know, they were good, good as well. Probably didn't create a lot in that opening part. And as the game wore on, strikers just kind of took over a little bit. Um, Olympic seemed to get tired and... Frustrated and, and got a late red card and Strikers got a, a second half goal and, and went on with it. So, mm. um, And you mentioned the um, unbeaten run for Peninsula. Up until this week, Olympic FC yeah. were actually on the same number of games unbeaten. So Strikers uh, knocked them off there. Yeah, cool. Um, okay, on to my next game in, uh, where are we talking here? Thornton Redbacks versus Belmont Swansea United. Now, we both, the TPO rankings and you guys as supporters, predicted a Belmont um, Swansea win, 71% of you guys also, same percentage as that Olympic vote. Uh, now we're both wrong in this one, um, 3 nil to Thornton Redbacks. Jake, what happened in the rankings? So, good win for Redbacks in the three goal margin helped them here. So they jumped up five spots, they're now 163rd, and Belmont Swansea uh, down seven spots, down to 160th. So those two clubs now very close on the rankings. Yeah, cool. And guys, I, the name of the league slipped me for a second, but that's the Northern New South Wales, the new FM league, which, Jake, is that just basically the league underneath the Northern New South Wales NPL? Yeah, like it's the their division? division one, I guess, uh, new FM, I'm guessing is like a sponsor sort of name, yeah. um, radio and is station. There promotion relegation between those two leagues? Um, there was uh, up until last year, I believe, they've okay. actually taken that off, um, or if there is, <laughs> it's like a conditional sort of thing, so... Um, mm. Short answer at the moment is no, as I understand it. Okay, yep. Thanks for that. Okay, in my third and final game, we had Fremantle City, and this is over in the WA Division 1, so the second league in Western Australia. Fremantle City, who were ranked in at 162nd, played Southwest Phoenix, who were slightly high in the rankings at 154th. Now, our percentage put it 0.2% in Southwest Phoenix's favour. 
you guys actually vote, 65% of you went for Fremantle City. And the result, 4-1 to South West Phoenix. So we got that right. You guys got that wrong. Um, so Jake, it looks like South West Phoenix up three spots in the rankings to 150 or two spots, is it? To 152nd. Fremantle City down four spots to 166. Jake, you had four games. Uh, what happened? Yeah, so I started off in the Victorian MPL in, in what I was saying was probably one of the games of the season so far um, in the MPL land, and that was Bentley Greens and Heidelberg. Um, and both of these, I think Bentley Greens up to this point was 10 games unbeaten and Heidelberg 9 or 10, depending on if you count the community shield in the preseason, which we hadn't when, uh, when we started or when we talked about it last week. Uh, Bentley Greens... Um, were not the favourites. They were at home, though. Um, so we had Heidelberg as the favourites. The supporters, um, it was a close one, but they ended up mm. going Heidelberg, 56% of you. And Bentley Greens uh, got up 1-0. So Heidelberg's run, or unbeaten run, came to an end. Um, and they slipped a little bit down the table on the back of that. So Heidelberg, as um, we mentioned, are the uh, team highest ranked outside the A-League. They're above Central Coast Mariners and Wellington. Um, so the loss and the drop of points actually puts them just ahead of Wellington still, but it's you know if they drop any more points that won't they won't stay there, um, yep. and they play South Melbourne I believe this weekend coming oh, so yeah. that'll be That's a big one there, um, and Bentley Green stay in 11th on the ranking so they're also ahead of Central Coast Mariners but they're now very close to uh, to Wellington Phoenix slightly above them so. Um, Within the next week, hypothetically, depending, you know, if, if Heidelberg don't win and, and Bentley Greens do next weekend, we could actually see Bentley Greens overtake Heidelberg and potentially Wellington on the, the rankings. So it's actually quite close in the, with those few clubs at the moment. And how, um, how are you, um, Bentley Greens, doing a great job featuring, featuring us in a video <laughs> for the promotion? And then you go and throw on a Heidelberg jersey after that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Bentley, I'd already ordered it. <laughs> yeah, fair um, enough. Yep, couldn't couldn't turn that one around. Um, and my my boring tones drifting over the uh, the pregame, but no, it was. Uh, I, I mean, I didn't get to see it, but I was watching it over the um, some of the comments on Twitter and Facebook. So it sounded like a, a pretty tense game there as well. Mm. Um, my next one was in Tasmania, Launceston City and South Hobart. So we had South Hobart as the clear favourites, just because they're ranked so high from previous seasons. Um, and the supporters, 74% of you actually backed us as well and went to South Hobart. The result was nil all. So this is one of those games where we will scrap it for the, the purpose yeah. of counting um, how many games we got correct because, uh, as we said, Instagram doesn't let us put a draw in there. Yeah. Um, but, like, like I said, because South Hobart was such favourites, they actually dropped a number of points. So they've dropped five places in the rankings down to 50th. Yeah. Um, and that's What's going on with them? Yeah, they're struggling this season, and I mean, I've, as I'm being in Queensland, it's hard for us to know all of the answers, but it sounds like some of the other clubs have uh, picked up some good players. Um, I was speaking to somebody who, who pl plays or has a brother playing for Launceston, um, and apparently they've picked up a couple of good players there, so they're looking much better this year than what their ranking suggests. So they're, they're climbing up the rankings, um, they're up another four spots to 156th, but being such a big gap between them and, and South Hobart, you'd think mm. that that gap will continue to close if they keep um, picking up points against those sort sure. of teams. Uh, back to Victoria for me. I, uh, in their second division there, the MPL2, we had Moreland Zebras and Altona Magic. Um, this one, we had Moreland Zebras as the favourite uh, and we had Altona Magic. Um, Pretty clear favourites too, Jake. Yeah, 69% I think it was. Um, and... Look, we've spoken about Altona Magic in past weeks, so Altona being very low-ranked compared to what their performances and results are showing, sure. so they're still catching up. Supporters uh, recognise that, I guess, and 69% and of you said Altona Magic. Uh, it went nil all, so neither of us get the points there, so another one of those that was scrapped. Was scrapped but, yep. um, but similar to the, the game I was just talking about, because Zebras were such favourites, the draw is actually... Uh, not good for them from a TPO rankings point of view, and they've fallen four more spots down to 58. Uh, and Altona have jumped, even though it was only a draw, they jumped up another seven places in the rankings. So uh, they're up to 133rd, but I don't think it'll be very long until we see them cracking or getting close to the top 100 sure. um, in the, the coming weeks. And then my last one for the week was uh, ACT MPL. It was Tuggeranong United and Woden Western. Um, 
we said Tuggeranong, the supporters, 83% of you, so overwhelming, said Tuggeranong, and Tuggeranong got the win 2-0, so we were both right there. Uh, and Tuggeranong now, I think, is it's four from four wins, and they're top of the table down um, in or down for yeah, us yeah. in ACT. Um, and it's funnily, the, these two exact same clubs played twice in the last week, once in the FFA Cup and once in the league. Uh, Tuggeranong won the league game, Woden Western won the FFA Cup game. Hmm. Um, and because the FFA Cup has a slightly bigger impact on the rankings, uh, the points that Tuggeranong lost in that game were more than the, the points they gained in the sure. league. So overall, even though the game we're talking about Tuggeranong won, they've actually gone down um, three places in the rankings in the last seven days. Uh, and West, yep. Western Woden has, has climbed two spots. So I believe it's Woden Western, Jake. Woden Western, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Woden Western. Um, yeah. Anyway, so those are my four games. Um, yeah. So cool. That's seven games, guys, and two were draw, so that's down. We scrapped those down to five games. We got three right. You only got one. What's going on? Um, so we take a lead. We're on 18 overall, and you guys are on 16. Um, cool. So Jake, we'll, and we will be previewing four more games at the end of the show, just four this week. With Jake <laughs> promised last week, I don't know if you can remember, to keep it to two games. So I've matched him. We're just going to do four. Um, again, that's at the end of the show. Before we move on to the main part of our, our show, Jake, any other movements or um, up and down the rankings? Yeah, there was a couple that I thought are worth mentioning. Um, looking first, and, and some of this I'll get into in a minute in the next part of the, the show, but in Western Australia, Perth Soccer Club and Bayswater City, the two favourites over there for the, the title, uh, both lost against teams that they were that are further down the rankings, so unexpected. Um, Perth Glory Youth that we mentioned last week, the biggest movers up the rankings out of every club in Australia uh, or in our rankings in, in 2018. They had another win, so they're now up to 81st. Uh, Oakley Cannons fell outside the top 25 uh, from, compared to last week. And it's actually, I, I went and had a quick look, it's been a pretty big fall very quickly. So two weeks ago they were ranked 20th and now they're down to 27th already. Yeah. Um, and they've been replaced by Rockdale City Suns in the top 25 from New South Wales. Uh, and they are just ahead of uh, Western Pride, who are in 26th. So I did put out something on um, on Twitter, at least, uh, maybe Facebook, just saying that Western Pride, depending on results on Sunday, could have snuck into the 25 yeah. and, and things didn't go their way, but they're, they're pushing or knocking on the door. Um, and then the last one is the biggest mover in the last seven days on the rankings has been North Coast City. So they've jumped nine places up the rankings to 48th. Uh, and yep. that's on the back of an FFA Cup win um, and then a, a league win on, on the weekend. So they're probably the, I guess, the biggest movers and the, some of the, the interesting ones that jumped out at me. Cool. All right, well, thanks for that, Jake. Let's move on to predicted league tables. Jake, we're looking at where the teams from three of the different NPLs around the country will look at season end, at least according to us, according to our system. Yeah, so I believe we've got... Um, New South Wales, Western Australia, South Australia. Jake, can we kick us off where you want to start, Western Australia? Uh, yeah, let's go over to the West Coast to start with. Um, and we should mention that we picked these three leagues because they're a little bit further in than some of the others. A few weeks ago, we already covered um, Queensland and Victoria, I think it was. So go back a mm -hmm. few episodes and watch that one. Um, and we'll, we'll probably do an update on those in, in another month or two when we get a bit closer. But starting over in Western Australia, um, this one's really interesting for somebody who's sitting in Brisbane and, and hasn't really had much, um, I guess, knowledge of what's going on over in, the, in Western Australian football. At the moment, if you look at the, the table or the image we've got up, we've got five teams all within one point of each other on the top of the, at the top of the table. So you've got the Perth Glory Youth Team, Bayswater City, uh, Perth Soccer Club, Coburn City and ECU Joondalup. Um, and I went back and, and had a look to see if any of these clubs have maybe had an easier early uh, hmm. fixtures list and it's not really the case so out of those five teams if you go and look at their fixtures they've played each other so one of the other top five teams three times each um, yep. except for ECU Joondalup who's, who's only done uh, played two of those other teams so maybe they've had it slightly easier but across the board it's been pretty even um, and it's a top four final system in Western Australia so the, the fact that we've got five clubs up there is um, if it keeps going anyway, it'll, it'll make for a very interesting end of the season. Um, Perth and Bayswater are the two highest ranked clubs in the TPO rankings, so they're going to be the favourites um, for the Premiership at this stage. But like we just mentioned before, both of those clubs lost to 
to lower ranked clubs over the weekend that they um, shouldn't have, I guess, from a rankings point of view at least. Um, so you definitely don't write off those other clubs that are that are in the pack there and chasing them. Um, and in particular, like we mentioned last week um, and earlier on already, is Perth Glory Youth Team are absolutely shooting up the rankings there. They were, when we looked at it a week ago, 65 places up already, uh, and they've jumped um, another bunch of places this week. So you, you can't write them off either. Um, and then without wanting to focus too much on just the top of the table, if you look at the bottom end as well, um, there's two teams in Western Australia that get relegated at the end of the year. Um, Jindalup United looking likely at this stage. I mean, like I say, it's early, we're, we're nine rounds in, but um, they're going to have to do something to, to turn it around pretty quickly, I would imagine. Mm. Um, but the other, the second club that's going to get relegated, if, if we look at our predicted um, total points at the end of the season, there's another four clubs there that are all fairly close. You've got Forestfield United, Armidale, Balcatta and Subiaco are all kind of going to be fighting, although Balcatta's picked up a number of points, including a win over um, a couple of the top clubs. So, um, yeah, it's it's interesting at both ends in Western Australia. It's it, it's kind of already separated into the, the top five and the bottom kind of four, four or five, um, and then mm-hmm. there's a couple in the middle that are trying to figure out where they're going to sit. Um, so, yeah, I... You know, I, I expect in the next couple of weeks we'll probably see some of the, the top five or maybe two or three of those break away a little bit more. But like I said, not knowing much from over here in Brisbane, it's it's quite interesting and, and um, I'd be interested to know for somebody who's, who's actually over there and knows more than I do, you know, these of those five clubs at the top, are they um, recruiting well? You know, is it that they're, I guess, genuine title contenders this year? Are they having a, a good early run or is, is there something else there? So... Um, if, if that's something that uh, you know, get in touch with us and, and we might uh, Definitely. update it next week. So, um, I don't know, is there anything yeah, in there, cool. Cody, from, f- that, that jumps out at you that looks interesting? No, you're right. I, I was thinking the exact same when you posted these images earlier. Those five clubs up the top, it's so even, and, and Inglewood and Balcata sort of knocking on the door as well. So, I think you said it all very well, Jake. Let's go to New South Wales. Right, so New South Wales. Um, We've got APL Leichhardt and Sydney Olympic setting the pace early on. Um, so they're out in front with with 16 points. Um, we've got Blacktown City that we've spoken about a few times already. Um, that Up until a couple of weeks ago, they were the highest ranked MPL club in New South Wales. And AP has now overtaken them um, after a couple of the, the latest results. But um, I'd say out of the two, the Sydney Olympic and, and AP are arguable, but I'd you know, maybe AP has had it a little bit tougher with the early round fixtures. So, given that they've come out with the same number of points, there they're probably looking favourites at the moment for the the premiership at least. And their higher ranking is obviously going to favour them as well. Um, Blacktown City, though, still rank very highly. They're above Central Coast Mariners. So, even though they're they're a few points, five points behind those league leaders, they're still favoured to pick up the points and finish in second. Um, and I believe New South Wales is a, a top five um, final system. Okay. So Sydney Olympics up there, and the other two at the moment that are predicted to finish in the top five are Sydney United and Manly, um, although um, Sutherland Sharks probably worth a mention, at least from a rankings point of view. They're, they're shooting up at the moment a bit, but they're, they're sitting in fifth on the, on the table, um, and they're probably... Well, the, the TPO ranking might suggest they're punching a little above their weight at the moment, but I mean, this early in the season, it, it's hard to know whether um, you know their, their ranking needs to catch up a bit or whether it's just a, an early um, bit of form that that'll drop away. It's um, something that I'll be watching as well over the, the few weeks to come. Um, yeah, cool. At the other end, there, uh, I know that we've got percentages and, and predictions for relegation. It's probably not quite right. New South Wales is the the one league at the moment that I think the only one in Australia that uh, it's not just based on the top men's club for relegation, it's a championship. So where it says relegated in the image, it's probably more the wooden spoon that we're uh, predicting there. So Bonnie Rigg at the bottom, Sydney FC youth team also predicted to to finish near the bottom. So, um, yeah, that one's uh, probably a little bit more spaced out, but the the top will definitely be competitive between those Mm. um, APO Blacktown, Sydney Olympic at the moment. And having Hakoa... To predicted to finish third bottom and Marconi fourth bottom, both in some you know Marconi just beat Black Blacktown City on the weekend. So, what a tight competition this one is. Yeah, exactly. And, and Manly, obviously the grand final winners from twenty seventeen, 
um, sitting a little further down the table at the moment, equal on points with Rockdale, Mark Honey and Hakoa that you mm. just mentioned. But because they're good 2017, their their higher TPO ranking means they're expected to pick up small points. But you know they yeah. they have to do it, and they've they've actually got I think um, a, a couple of tough games. I'll, I'll go and I might put it on the, in the comments later, but. Um, I think they've got a, a couple of tough rounds in the next few weeks. So, you know, we like I said, the, it, their high ranking expects them to pick up points, but if they don't start doing it, they're going to find themselves in a bit of trouble. Hmm. And Jake, South Australian NPL, let's wrap up there. All right. So South Australia, we've got Metro Star shooting out to an early lead there. Um, eight straight wins um, after their they, they had a loss in the first round, um, but they're they're currently nine games unbeaten and. And I put this out again earlier today, saying that they're one of the, the longest unbeaten runs. But And somebody rightly pointed out, it's not that they're nine, unga- nine games unbeaten, it's that they're nine games with nine wins in a row. So that's it's pretty impressive in itself. Um, Adelaide City uh, are right behind them at the moment, three points behind them, and Campbelltown City, after a, a really good start in the first uh, four or five rounds, uh, a couple of points back on them as well, and, and expected to finish third at the moment. Um, Adelaide City on the weekend, though, uh, against Croydon Kings, they were 2-0 down. Um, this one was live-streamed, and it was a really entertaining second... Well, it was an entertaining game, but the second half they came back to win 3-2, and there was a couple of really great goals in there. So it was, um, you know, could have been uh, worse for Adelaide City, but they, they managed to pull it back. And Croydon Kings is probably the surprise at the moment. They were the 2017 champions, and um, sitting down in eighth at the moment on the NPL ladder... Um, they're ranked 38th still on the TPO rankings, but they started the, the season in, in the top 25, so they've fallen a long way. Um, and, yeah, they'll, they'll be disappointed. And they are expected to finish about 6th, I think we've got them, um, but yeah, that, which would get them into the finals. Um, and I'll correct me if I'm wrong, somebody, or, or Cody if you know it, but I think it's top 6 in South Australia get into the finals. So um, okay. that might be enough to see Croydon Kings get in if, if the predictions are right. Um, uh, at the bottom of the table, just very quickly, Sturt Lions have it all to do. They're they're languishing um, and they're looking like they're gonna. I mean, they're they're a couple of points behind West Torrens, Bacala, but most of the other clubs are now starting to pull away, so they're gonna have to to turn it around pretty quickly. And then the other relegation spot, the second one, will be fought at the moment. Looks like between South Adelaide Panthers and West Torrens, Bacala, or Para Hills Knights. So there's a, a few clubs down there expected to finish on about the same points. So. Um, yeah, yeah, look, to be honest, we keep repeating it, but all of these leagues, there's some really interesting um, kind of, I mean, the competition as a whole, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on, but you start kind of digging into the, the teams at the bottom separately and the teams at the top, and yeah, it's um, yeah, some interesting stories playing out, that's for sure. Cool, well, thanks for putting that together, Jake, and running through that, and guys, next week we're going to be looking at Tasmania, northern New South Wales, and what's the other league, Jake? I think uh, we're going to do uh, ACT league. is the other ACT. one we haven't covered yep. yet. So. We're going to be yep. doing those three leagues. So if you're interested in those ones, tune in next week. Yep. Um, if you're not interested, tune in anyway. So, all right, we're going to finish the show with two games each. I'm going to kick us off with, we will mention some of these just earlier, Marconi Stallions versus Rocktail City Suns. So both teams sit mid to lower end of the table. And I've chosen this basically based on because Marconi just beat... Um, Blacktown City on the weekend, 1-0. Huge result for those guys. Um, I want to see if they can back it up with a win over Rockdale, who are coming off a two-all draw against Sydney Olympic, also high up on the table. Marconi ranked at 40th. Uh, Rockdale City Suns ranked at 24th, which gives them, which makes them favourite. 47.4% probability, um, percent probability of winning. Uh, I'll go on to my second game, Jake, then you can wrap up with your two. So... I head over to the Western Australian MPL, which we also just covered. Balcatta, 138th, uh, versus Coburn City, ranked 80th. Balcatta coming off a massive win against, um, as you mentioned, Jake Perth Soccer Club, who are ranked over 100 spots above them, which is just crazy. They've gone up 19 spots on the rankings over the last 30 days. Coburn sitting equal second on the ladder, performing really well, and up 16 spots on the rankings over the last 30 days. So they're teams who are just flying up the table at this stage. Big game for, massive game for both teams. Jake, two games, what do you got? 
Yep, I did struggle to keep it to two, I'll be honest. I, I considered throwing in another one, but I told everybody I wouldn't. So um, the first one this week for me is in Victorian MPL 2, and it's uh, top of the table clash in a, in a sense. Um, Dandenong City from the MPL 2 East League and Altona Magic from the MPL 2 West League. So they're both they're on top of their um, respective leagues at the moment. So uh, it's not often, I guess, it. it you know, this probably happens a couple of times a year, but it's the first time, I think, this season that we've seen the top team from each of those leagues playing each other. Um, the Endenong City ranked 68, Altona Magic 133rd. We've talked all about Altona and, and how their ranking is probably too low, so the gap is um, probably not, not quite right, and, and the probabilities will favour Dandenong City, 65% chance of a win, um, Altona 17, but it, it'll be a lot closer than I think that indicates. Um, then the Long City, though, you know, I don't want to underplay um, or discredit them. They're seven wins from nine, and they're actually looking like probably the biggest test for Altona Magic this season so far. Mm-hmm. So they they are looking quite strong and and uh, predicted to win um, the MPL Two East and get direct promotion. Altona is expected to finish down in um, fourth at the moment, just based on their lower rankings. So that'll be a good one. Um, and then the other one I've got is Northern New South Wales MPL, and it's Edgeworth Eagles and. Charlestown City Blues, um, and this is a, a battle between the club that's predicted to, to finish first on, um, by the TPO rankings, and that's Edgeworth, and the club that is currently in first, which is Charlestown City Blues, um, and Charlestown's ranking has been increased in this season, but Edgeworth have been in the top 25 or there or thereabouts for a, a little while now, um, and they're at home, they're the favourites, um, but I, I wouldn't write off Charlestown um, simply because five wins into the season, uh, six six games in, sorry, they've had five wins, um, and that included against Landon Jaffers and Hamilton Olympic, a couple of those other clubs that are um, kind of mid-table. So, look, this will be a big test for, for Charlestown City Blues, though. So, I, I mm. you know, Edgeworth Eagles, 77% chance of winning. Charlestown only given a 9.5%. Um, I think Edgeworth will probably um, live up to that, but it'll be interesting to see. I mean, this is kind of the the first um, or maybe the second chance to play one of those big three clubs, I guess, in Northern New South Wales for Charlestown sure. City. And, and if they can knock off Edgeworth after being Lamb and Jeffers a few weeks ago, it, it kind of solidifies their title ambitions. For sure. Well, guys, that's that's the bloody show, isn't it? That's um, three segments done. As always, those votes, those four games, well, I'll be putting that up on Instagram stories on Wednesday evening. So you've got 24 hours to get over there and vote. They've been... Every week we're getting more and more people voting, so thank you very much for participating. Really yep. appreciate it. Um, other than that, guys, we're also we've we've done two now Facebook lives on a Sunday night. We're going to maybe try and schedule that in for eight thirty every Sunday night. Jake and I just riffing on what's happening over the over the the results on over the weekend and, and the rankings, and actually getting involved with you guys, the the supporters and, and the the followers, the getting you to write your, your clubs in, and we're responding. We're actually given two hoots so it's, it's been a lot of fun jake's over on twitter you know everything's happening so thanks very much for following us along so far it's been a really good journey we're really enjoying it thank you again to potential for the shirt and um jake heidelberg for the jake shirt um anything else to mention jake before we head off no I, again i'll just reiterate thanks for for the support i mean we're getting some good comments and and people sharing our stuff so um, you know, we, I think Cody, you put a, an image up earlier on that just said, you know, we're we're doing it because we love it at the end of the day, and and mm. that's it. You know, we're <laughs> we're enjoying it. So we started off pretty simple, and we're just you know, launching out into different different things and doing more. So we'll keep it going for as long as people are interested. Mm. And yeah, we really appreciate the responses um, and and feedback. Definitely feedback. We, we want to make this better every single week, uh, everything we do. So thank you very much, guys. Really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week in round 11 of the Pecking Water Show.